Okay, what we have here is uh, the horrendous DVD Frozen. Now, what I can show is if you look at the DVD itself, there's only white light in this room, but what we're seeing is a load of uh, rainbows uh, which are formed on this. And this is what I'd really like to talk about now. Why it is that we can get this uh, rainbow of colours from the top of a DVD or a CD. We can actually see something very similar by shining uh, laser light, which I talked through in the last video, uh, through something called a diffraction grating. And as I shine that uh, light through the grating, it splits out. Now we get a huge amount of uh, really bright maximas and uh, plenty of uh, minimas where there's no light coming through. And uh, this is a bit like the two slit experiment, but not using two or three or four, but hundreds and hundreds of slits. If we have some form of light source and we send that light through a diffraction grating, uh, what we get are a series of bright and dark spots on the screen. And that's what I'd like to really look through at the moment. So perhaps we have our diffraction grating over here. We get uh, a bright spot, which we're going to call a maxima. And then there's going to be certain minimum spots. And then we have another maximum spot over here and here and here and so on. Now, the one in the middle, because it's often the brightest, is called the zeroth order maxima. Then we have the first order, second order. And this is a good way of working out the wavelength of light. Uh, and what we say is that d sine theta equals n lambda. Okay, and I'd like to talk through this equation now. Now, if we think about a line that joins uh, the center of the diffraction grating to the zeroth order, and also a line that goes to the first order, the angle between the two is equal to theta. Now, we can measure this very well in the lab. Now, the good thing about using a diffraction grating to measure the wavelength of light over the two slit experiment is that there's so many different gratings here, it lets a lot of light through. So that means it's very easy to see the bright uh, fringes that we see over here. Um, we can also uh, look at um, the separation of the fringes. Now on the slide here, there are 300 lines per millimetre. So D is equal to the distance between the slits. Okay, the uh, lambda over here is the wavelength of the light. Theta is this angle here, and N uh, refers to the order of the maximum. So we might have N equals one, N equals two, or N equals three, and so on. Now if we, uh, set this up in the lab, we may, maybe want to find out or just confirm the wavelength of light. If you set this up so you've got a large enough distance, to measure the angle uh, theta is fairly straightforward um, because we've got a triangle here with a right angle. We can measure this distance and we can measure that distance and therefore we can calculate theta. We can maybe look at the distance from maybe the zero to the first or second order maxima and then we can very easily work out the, uh, the distance between the slits. If we know all of that, we can work out the wavelength of the light. So why is it that this frozen DVD, as horrible as it is, why does that leave a, a beautiful rainbow of light? But yet if I shine red light on it from the, the laser, it just uh, there's no other colours showing. Well, the reason for that is this acts as a reflective diffraction grating. What there are, are thousands and thousands of uh, very, very small lines, so many hundreds of lines per millimetre, uh, and that acts in the same way as a diffraction grating that we saw where we just had the light going straight through. And it's a light that's reflected, uh, comes out in the different colours. So if we can think about having a rainbow uh, from white light on this, what would happen if we shone white light through our diffraction grating? What we tend to find is uh, there's a bit of a sort of a rainbow towards the edge. When you shine white light through a diffraction grating, uh, what we find is that this import, uh, the equation we used before, where d sine theta is equal to n lambda, uh, is very important. Now, provided we look at this, the, the first order maxima to begin with, and we think about using the same diffraction grating, we can say that sine theta is proportional to the wavelength. Now, what that means is, the longer the wavelength of light, so perhaps we had red light, as opposed to something like blue light that has a shorter wavelength, we find that this one here theta is going to be bigger than if we have this one here. So the theta is a smaller value. What that means is in the very center, we have all of the colors of light passing straight through uh, and therefore we have a white spot in the middle. If we look at the first order maxima, what we find is that the, the blue light 
doesn't move a huge amount, but then the various colours of light, uh, I can't show them all here, but I'll just um, colour a couple in. What we get is that the light spreads out with the blue and the purple nearest to the white light. And what we get on the other side is the opposite, because we've got the, um, the blue light not spreading out as much as the red. So that's what we get for the first order. We get the same thing again for the second order. Again, the uh, angle the theta is gonna be bigger for the red light that has a longer wavelength. And what we see are these sort of various rainbows that split apart from that, uh, the very white light in the middle. So this is important. We can use a diffraction grating to split apart white light. and We can then look at the different colors that make up that light. And this is absolutely key when we look at astronomy. If we look by looking at starlight through diffraction gratings, we can tell about the different colors of light that are in the light that we're analyzing.